Team Reds from South Africa. Could you guys come up? Good afternoon, Board of Directors. We are Team Reds from Crawford College, Sanson. There's new fallout from the emissions cheating scandal at... This is Kayla Naeem, and this is Sashin Jagdesi. VW, the car made for the people. What many forget is that VW had some troubled beginnings. It was the brainchild of one of the most hated, brutal men on earth, Adolf Hitler. Having overcome these beginnings and many pollution scandals, it looks to recreate itself in the modern world through the Together 2025 strategy, where it looks to become more eco-friendly, and our solutions will show that. Now off to Sashlin with these solutions. So the prioritization of the most important issues. Number one is product portfolio rationalization. This aids cost cutting for cash flow improvements and this will allow VW to focus on their motto of being the car for the people. Number two is strategy and cost optimization. Now the cutting down of unnecessary costs and expenses through improved internal controls will improve profit and increase operating efficiency. This money can be used towards paying for the fines or funding the e-mobility strategy. Number three is the Paris Accord. There's a period of eight months before emission standards tighten, and this will heavily influence how the future generation of VW vehicles will be developed. Number four is the cobalt uh, sourcing. Now, seeing that this needs to be before e-mobility, it is essential that VW monopolizes the cobalt market in order to gain a competitive advantage over their competitors in terms of the uh, electric vehicles. And lastly is the e-mobility strategy. This is a long process as converting all or most of their vehicles will take a lot of time, money, and innovation, especially seeing that there's a huge competition with Tesla and the production of their batteries. Thus, it is placed at number five. Then I come in with the first solution, which is product portfolio rationalization. The key with product portfolio rationalization are two brands, Bentley and Bugatti. Firstly, Bentley is a company when analyzed from the graph, you can see that their emissions are extremely high and their sales and profits are significantly lower when compared to other brands. Therefore, the fines that they incur within the next year may not even allow them to make a profit. The brand should be sold to another entity that can focus on increasing sales and decreasing emissions and that does not have more profitable portfolios to focus on. VW needs to focus on brands that follow its vision, which is the people. Secondly, we have Bugatti. Bugatti is a brand that is essential in keeping VW's public relations intact. Bugatti has the fastest car in the world, and this increases the motor community's faith in VW's quality and capabilities. Therefore, Bugatti just needs to cover its costs, if not make a small profit, as this combined with its prestige is more than enough reason for VW to keep the brand. Bugatti needs to create a supply and demand chain reaction where they decrease their supply, therefore increasing price and covering future losses and fines that may be incurred. Lastly is the volume car category. Engine sizes in this category need to be decreased in order to meet with emission standards, but good quality cars still need to be delivered to the people. Next up is strategy and cost optimization with Sinai. It is essential for VW to cut costs in order to increase the flow of capital through their business, as well as their overall net profits. We have came up, come up with four ways which this could be done. Firstly, is stationary and printing. They should implement usage reductions, which are region-specific, to prevent wastage. In addition to that, they should limit the supply of stationary that they have to each specific business that they have. In addition to that, they need to find cheaper alternatives without compromising the quality of service delivery. Advertising is also one of the most expensive things VW has to pay for. They should rather use more cheaper and effective methods, such as dig digital marketing, so they can control the spread of information and allow VW to be viewed in a more positive life. light. In addition to that, they can sponsor competitions as the main share of the costs will be incurred by the company hosting the competition. Retrenchment is an option. However, it is a major ethical issue, which will be discussed later on. Lastly, the reduction of direct factory overheads, such as rent expense and water and electricity, will save VW over 53.6 million euros. Sashton will now discuss the Paris Accord. Okay, the Paris Accord and legislation. To think 53.6 million euros was a big number. After the Dieselgate scandal in 2015, VW is required to pay 19 0.5 billion euros worth in fines. 
Now, this is mostly due to the fact that majority of the commercial and production vehicles produce high emissions, and unfortunately, luxury vehicles sit on top of this list. The standard, in order to be within these standards, which are unfortunately going to be tightened on the 1st of January 2019, it is suggested that the engine of the production and commercial vehicles either be reduced in size or adapted in order to produce less emissions. Now, this mostly needs to occur in Europe, US, and Asia. Luxury brands such as Bentley should be sold and a production decrease should be implemented on Bugatti in order to be within these standards. However, VW is a low-geared and low-risk company as shown by the percentages and calculation above, meaning that they do qualify for a loan. And the profits generated by certain brands such as Porsche does justify for the payments of the fines. I'm sure if VW commences with this, Greta Thunberg will be really pleased. This will thus take us into the sourcing of cobalt. So cobalt is a very important resource in terms of battery production, especially seeing that VW is entering the new market for electric vehicles. As VW enters this new market, it is important that they gain the necessary resources at a minimal cost. Cobalt is a scarce resource as it is, so monopolizing the cobalt supply will ensure that firstly, VW manages to maximize the supply of the market, as well as to gain strategic alliance from Panasonic for the production of their batteries, as they are currently producing batteries for the number one competitor, Tesla. Now, this will mean that there will be a decrease of operating expenses in the future, as a future generation of VW vehicles will be within the legislation of the Paris Accord. Now, cobalt is mainly sourced from Africa. However, this will play a huge ethical impact on the business, which will be discussed later. Therefore, cobalt will drive VW into the future with e-mobility. E-mobility, the strategy is to become as eco-friendly as possible, as soon as realistically possible, as we need to deliver our promise to the people. We have decided that Panasonic is the best supplier of batteries, as it has a six-month rolling period and a lifespan of 160,000 kilometers, which is in line with most maintenance plans. It will take time to invent cars that are electrically powered, have high speeds and high power. Therefore, this is a long-term goal. E-mobility will help with 2023-2024 emission standards. The money needed for the solution will be funded from cost-cutting, portfolio rationalization, and a loan which VW will need to obtain, and they can obtain due to their financial position. Let us prevent immobility in the future by using e-mobility. Next is ethics with Sinai. One can say that VW is the car made for the people, by the people. Thus did Bentley and Bugatti strategies that result in major retrenchments go against VW's vision of being a car for the people. On a larger scale, the mass retrenchments across the VW board will re result in a detriment of their public image as VW is known for treating, treating their employees well. This would also increase the stress levels and decrease the productivity of remaining employees, thus decreasing their overall net profits. They should rather decrease salary increases and reduce the future bonuses. The other ethical issue lies within the sourcing of cobalt in the DRC. This cobalt will be sourced from artisanal miners, which are normally child miners or illegal miners. Thus, VW is taking advantage of them and putting their life in jeopardy in order to acquire the cobalt at a low purchase price, once again going against their main vision of being a car for the people. We will now head to Kayla to conclude. So we are going to summarize our solutions in a timeline. Firstly is product portfolio rationalization. The reason for this is that job cutting in Bugatti is a lengthy process, and so is the divestiture in Bentley. Therefore, within the next few weeks, portfolio rationalization plans need to be implemented. Secondly, is cost cutting. Cost cutting is pivotal in securing the capital needed to fund other solutions. Therefore, within the next month, cost cutting plans need to begin. Thirdly, we have the emission standards. And these fines will be incurred soon enough that within the next month, plans to change engine sizes need to be implemented. So in the eight month period, we do not incur fines. Lastly, are the last two, which I'll leave to Sashlin. Okay, the monopolizing of the cobalt supply is heavily reliant and dependent on the success of the product portfolio rationalization and the strategy and cost optimization plans. E-mobility, however, can only be considered in a few years' time because there are other factors to consider, such as the better quality of batteries as well as the, co uh, the cobalt supply. On to Sinai. We believe that if VW sticks to their vision of being a car for the people, they can overcome their future 
challenges. Thus, we feel that you should take into consideration our recommendations when planning the future of VWAG. Thank you so much. Any further questions? Thank you for your presentation. Um, it was really interesting. Um, I do have a couple of clarifying questions, please. So if you could maybe just um, help me to understand some of your thinking a bit clearer. So when we talk about the emissions and whether the recommendations around, you know, do we replace all the engines, some of the engines, no engine replacement, what is your final verdict on that? Okay, so what we said is firstly, because we have part of portfolio rationalization first, We'll cut out those cars so we won't have to adapt those engines, or we'll reduce for Bugatti to have that power. We feel that because of its prestige, we will pay the fines and we won't uh, replace those engines. But the volume car category will replace the engines, but it's a long-term goal due to the fact that we need to source our cobalt and our e-mobility. Our first goal would be just reducing engine sizes and reducing emissions in the volume car category. But then linked to that also um, around the cobalt, so wait, are you going to work with artisanal miners? What is your plan around securing the cobalt then? What was your final recommendation around that? Okay, so we are actually going to be sourcing our cobalt from Africa. However, we have discussed that VW should negotiate with the miners certain working conditions and certain conditions that they will be sourcing the, the cobalt from. So for example, um, they'll be making negotiations with the miners that the workers should not be exploited and they should not be child miners in order to um, maintain the public image and be the car for the people. So still to work with artisanal yes. miners, but under certain conditions. Yes, yes. But then linked to that, to sorry. To add on to that, mm. we would also be investing in CSR projects in order to improve the overall community in which the artisanal miners live in. Okay, but then linked to diesel, so my, my concern is that linked to dieselgate, so you're still coming off dieselgate and around public perceptions. Yes, yes. You're not going to meet the emissions criteria in all cases. It's only in some. And the cobalt, you're still going to work with artisanal miners with no guarantee that any of the CSI initiatives or anything else are actually going to work. So I need to understand, you, you are actually posing, there's a, there's a significant risk here, well, risks to the company and our brand. How do you then propose to mitigate those risks in light of the recommendations you are making? Okay, so what we have decided is that in the volume car category, that is the category where we sell the most cars, and therefore that category will meet the emission standards. And that is also a category that has been tainted by the uh, previous emission uh, violations. And then what we will do is that we, throughout our presentation, we highlighted that we are focusing on the people. By divesting from Bentley and cutting down on Bugatti, we will try and create a culture in the company where the people are the main focus and we'll showcase this to the rest of the world. And by showcasing our e-mobility strategy and how we plan to become a very electric uh, company and a very eco-friendly company, we will show people that we are changing and that we are becoming more for the people and going back to our old vision, which made us very successful. Uh, does that answer your question? It does and it doesn't because um, because you know, because you're not actually offering necessarily anything tangible. The tangible things mm -hmm. is what the company actually does and the contracts it holds with its supply chain and its relationships. It, you know, in, in what it does. So what you're saying is the nice marketing around it and how yeah. we'll communicate. But I'm not really getting. It. But I, I, actually, I think I need to pass on for the questions. But just something to to maybe think about. Okay. okay. So if I heard you correctly, you're saying that you're going to. With the, um, so you're going to sell the Bentley and you're going to keep the Bugatti range and you plan to increase the prices of the Bugatti cars? By cutting down supply. By cutting down supply. So you increase the price and you cut down supply. Yes, because, because this a car is a very prestigious car. People will want it because it's the fastest car in the world. But if it's by order, we can increase the price. And because there's less cars, less people will have it, so it will increase the value of the car. So in an environment where... Everything that possibly can be going up is going up, mm -hmm. right? And I think with the um, high unemployment and I think uh, the constraints that we are all feeling from a global perspective, mm -hmm. how do you expect to 
keep your competitiveness and still increase your price? How do you hope to keep your market positioning with the price increase? And maybe let me just ask the second question as well. You plan to go with Panasonic as your selected battery supplier. How do you plan to deal with the potential risk that can come with the close collaboration that Panasonic has with your rivals, Tesla? Can I answer your second question first, if that's fine? Okay, so what we have decided is that Cobalt is going to be monopolized as in our plan. And if Cobalt's monopolized, Tesla will rely on VW. Therefore, Panasonic and Tesla will be forced to give VW better batteries. Otherwise, Tesla will not be able to produce their own batteries because we will have the Cobalt, if that makes sense. And then the first part of your question, if you can please repeat it. So how do you plan to keep your competitiveness, your market position, mm -hmm. when you increase in prices, especially where we all feel in the economic strain on a global so Bugatti is a car normally known for its status. Most people want it because of the status. Oh, I'm driving a Bugatti, okay? So by increasing the prices, we make it more elaborate and available to those higher class people which the car is targeting. Thus, the increase of the price will also decrease the losses that we're getting from Bugatti and increase the profits that we have from them. Does that answer you? Uh, can I add on? on oh, can I sorry. sorry. Okay, obviously Bugatti is a luxury vehicle, and as we're pr uh, reducing the production, it means that there's only a certain amount uh, available. So this will obviously increase the demand of the vehicle. So if you're familiar with vehicles that are like only 100 made, these vehicles are obviously much more expensive, and people are actually willing to pay the money for this. Thus, it will keep our marketing up. Just to follow on, on what you, you have been discussing now, with volumes going down, mm -hmm. Um, and your volume segment being in a loss-making position, how do you think, what are the projections that you are making in terms of sales and prices, which will then make the company sustainable and profitable going forward? Okay, so from our strategy and cost optimization, that will uh, decrease our factory overheads and therefore it will increase our profit in the volume car category. Also, what we have decided is that because e-mobility is our future, it is easier for us to adapt the engines of volume cars because they don't need to produce as much power. And therefore, we will put more focus onto the volume car category in and increase the profits there as the future more people want eco-friendly cars which will fall into the volume car category. This is why we don't want to cut it out because we will be more successful in terms of our e-mobility in that category. So you are to that, it also sticks to their overall vision of being a car for the people because most people in the current economic state go with, drive volume cars, not super premium cars or trucks or buses, which are VW's other brands. Which speaks then to my previous question, okay. where you are saying now um, that lots of people buy the, fewer people buy the, the super premium yes, cars, yes. and now you are going to then increase prices, but lower the supply. only on the premium cars. Excuse me? Only on the premium cars. Only on Bugatti, we're going to increase the prices. That's the only yeah. brand that we're increasing. And your recommendation yeah. suggests that we will still be profitable in that segment. Yes. 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 Okay. That's fine. And then you're saying that the immobility e strategy is your very last. Yes. yes. So um, as it is, you know, most customers are not really happy with VW because of the emissions scandal. And they, if, if VW does come up with a new strategy in terms of the electric vehicles and new vehicles, they will be very skeptical in terms of the, the stats that are produced because obviously after the 2015 Dieselgate scandal, customers might still be thinking, you know what, what if they are cheating this system now? So our plan is that in the product portfolio rationalization is to rectify the mistakes and fix it now in the current cars uh, with the petrol and the diesel engines in order to regain that customer confidence in order uh, for VW to succeed in the future when it comes to the e-mobility vehicle range. Are you then proposing to the board that we fix the current mistakes while we, u we lose out on our um, entry into the electric vehicle market only coming in in 2025? I don't believe it will be a loss because you're gaining more, uh, as I said, customer confidence. So that means more customers will be confident in the brand itself. Not saying that they aren't at the stage, but based on the 2015 Dieselgate scandal. If they can see that VW can rectify their mistakes and fix what they've done wrong in the past, 
then they will believe that obviously VW will not make the mistakes in the future again in terms of the new um, sector of the motor industry. My only concern with your answer is that it doesn't demonstrate that you would have um, vehicles yeah. that are in the market that the yeah. consumers are using that would then yield confidence in your brand and okay. in your later cars, the electric vehicles. Okay. Uh, one second. Mm -hmm. As of right now, VW does not have the capital in order to do e-mobility. So they need to get the capital by doing product portfolio rationalization and strategy and cost optimization. And they also need the capital to pay off the fines. That's why we put e-mobility last, because it will take the longest time to get there and get the money to do it. 